Let's say I want to delete multiple messages at the same time. I can do exclamation point CC or forward slash CC because I'll show you how to make a slash command as well. We can then specify how many messages we want to delete. In this case, three. It'll then delete three messages and it'll then tell us how many messages we deleted. And if I want to delete more messages, that's fine. I can specify as many as I want here and it'll go through and delete all those messages and tell us how many the bot deleted. This is what I'm going to show you how to make within this tutorial. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. In this video, I'll be using the worn off keys commands command handler. More information on that can be found in the description, but if you want to use a different command handler, that's perfectly fine. The actual code to delete the messages will be the exact same. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make a new command within my commands folder here. I'm going to call this CC for clear chat dot TS. And if you're using JavaScript, you would use JS instead. But I'm using TypeScript, so I'll specify TS. And for one of keys commands, we have to export an empty object within JavaScript that we module dot exports equals an empty object. And within TypeScript, that would be export default object. Now, if you're using one of keys commands, we can also specify that this object will be an instance of the I command interface. This allows us to have additional autocomplete. For example, if I go into this object and I use control space, it's going to show me all the options that I have from worn off keys commands. So to start off, we need a category. In this case, I'll call this moderation. We also need a description such as deletes multiple messages at once. And also make sure you spell messages right. Now we don't want anyone to be able to use this command. By default, we can pass in a string array of discord permissions. So I could say permissions as an array. And within here, I can specify any permissions that I want the user to have in order to run this command. So the simplest and most obvious one will be administrator. Now, if you want server owners who are using your bot to be able to configure which roles can use the command, you can specify require roles as true. And this will force them to set up which roles can use this command before it can actually be ran. Now, an important note for this is that this will require you to have a database attached to one off keys commands. I do have a video explaining how to do that in the description down below. So because I don't have a database configured in this video, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out, but this will still be here for the patrons and YouTube members who do download the source code. And in one off keys commands, you can specify the minimum and maximum number of arguments. In this case, we just want to say the max args will be one. And also we can specify expected args to be a string. And here we're going to say that this is going to be the amount of messages to delete. So afterwards, I'm wanting this to be a legacy command and a slash command. So exclamation point CC will work as well as forward slash CC. So I can specify slash as both. And you won't have to specify any slash command specific syntax or listen for the interaction create events or anything like that. It's all handled behind the scenes from one of keys commands. Now, if you're familiar with slash commands, you know that we would only want to register this as a guild based slash command. So going into our index file, here we have test servers as a string array. And these are the guild IDs for any server that you want to be a test only server. So in this case, this is my testing server that I showed earlier. And so therefore I want to go into my command and specify test only as true. This will make it so this command can only be ran within that testing guild. Only a guild space slash command will be created and a global slash command will not. So now finally we get to create our callback method and this will be ran every single time someone actually runs this command. We're going to have an object passed in here so we can destructure some properties. For example, we want access to the message. We want access to the interaction. We want access to the channel that the message was sent in, as well as the arguments, which will be a string array of all arguments passed in. In this case, the only possibility would be amount. So now within here, our goal is to see how many messages the user wants to delete. And if they didn't specify amount, we could have a default, for example, 10. So I can say const amount. And here we're going to use a ternary operator to make sure that arguments actually exist because again, the maximum number of arguments is one and behind the scenes, the minimum number of arguments for one of keys commands is zero. So they could specify no arguments at all. So we can use args.length with a ternary operator. And so if args.length is a truthy value, therefore it's greater than zero. That means that we know that something was passed in. And so in this case, we can use parse int and pass in args.shift. And this is going to essentially take the first element of the arguments array, which in this case would be amount, and then return it into parse int, which would then turn it into a number. Now, if you're just using TypeScript, there will be an error here because it doesn't know if this actually exists or not. But because we are using args.length here for the ternary operator, we know for sure that this code will only be ran if something is inside the arguments array. So you can put an exclamation point here 
if you are using TypeScript, and that will basically tell TypeScript that we are sure that something actually exists here. Now, otherwise, if args.length is a falsy value, therefore nothing was passed in, we can just specify something like 10. Now, if you don't want to have a default value here, such as 10, we can actually go ahead and make it so the minimum number of arguments is one. And then also we can just specify the parse int portion right here. So I'm going to copy this and I can say const amount equals parse int. And so you just have this line here. If you know for sure you want someone to specify how many messages to delete. But if you do want a backup such as 10 here, in case they don't specify an amount, then you can go ahead and use this syntax here. So now we want to delete the message that was used to send this command if it was sent as a legacy command. So legacy commands such as exclamation point CC or question mark CC or whatever your prefix is, are going to be sent through a message. And slash commands do not use messages. So if someone used forward slash CC, a message is not going to be there. And this method property right here will be undefined. So I need to first make this callback asynchronous because we are about to use await. And then I'm going to say if message exists, therefore saying that this was ran as a legacy command, I can then say await message dot delete. Now we have to do this because it will count the message used as the command as some of the messages that we're going to try to delete. So we first have to delete this message here before we actually go through and delete all the current messages that were there before we ran the command. Now there are two main ways to delete messages. The first is with bulk delete. The other one is going to be fetch and then delete messages. So we're going to take a look at both within the documentation and then I'll show you examples of how to use both. So if we go over to the Discord JS documentation, we can do a search for text channel. And under methods, here we see bulk delete. Now this method says bulk deletes given messages that are newer than two weeks. So messages that are older than two weeks are going to have a problem being deleted with this method. And there are two arguments we can pass in. The first one is how many messages to delete, as we see from this example here. And the second argument is called filter old. And as you can see from the description, this will basically just ignore messages that are two weeks or older. So this is actually fairly simple to use. If we go back into VS Code, I'm going to say await channel dot bulk delete. We can then pass in the amount and then also pass in true. So it will ignore any messages that are older than two weeks. Now, as you can see from this right here, here are the parameters we're passing in. And here's what is returned. A promise is returned that is a collection. And so what we want to do is we want to get the size of that collection. So I'm actually going to destructure this from the result. I can say const size. And the size variable is going to be how many messages were actually deleted. Now we're going to be making a size variable similar to this one when we use the second option here. And I'm wanting to return to the user how many messages were actually deleted. Now normally with one of keys commands, we can just simply return something here. And this string will be returned to either the message for legacy commands or the interaction for slash commands. But in this case, that message for legacy commands might not exist as we see right here. So with that said, we want to see if this was a slash command or a legacy command, and then either return to the interaction or just send a message in the channel, which we have access to both right here. So let's first make the string. So I can say const reply equals a template literal. We can say deleted. We can insert in this messages. Now we can put parentheses around the S here because it might actually only delete one message. And so having it say deleted one messages doesn't make sense. So now we can see if this was a slash command. So if interaction is a thing, we can then say return reply. And then afterwards, we can then say channel dot send reply. So now no matter if it's a slash command or a legacy command, the actual text of what happened will be sent. Now, if you don't want to send any message at all, you can do that with legacy commands by just commenting this out, but all interactions, for example, from slash commands will require a reply. So you will still have to reply to that. So let's go ahead and try this out. And once this works, we'll go ahead and try the second option we have in order to achieve this functionality. So if I save this, I can open up my terminal and I can run this with npm run dev. You can use whatever script you want in order to actually run your bot. So now if I go in here, I can say test hello world. Hi, hey, hello. We're just saying random messages. And then I can say exclamation point CC one. So this will delete the CC command as well as hello right here, making it so hey is at the bottom. So if I run this, it'll delete those and it'll then say hey at the bottom and then it'll say deleted one messages. Now, if I do exclamation point CC, it'll then delete all messages and tell us how many it deleted. In this case, it was six. So this is working so far. So now we're going to go ahead and try and fetch all messages that we want and then loop through and delete those messages. So let's go over to the documentation. 
And if we go back to the top of the page under properties, we can scroll down and we can find messages right here. We can then click on message manager. So here we have access to a cache property. And if you're familiar with Discord JS, then you understand what this is. But in some cases, messages might not be cached. And so we want to use a fetch here to go ahead and fetch all messages that the user wants to delete. So as you see from the second example, we can pass in an object with a limit, and that will be the amount that the user specified in their arguments. And we also see that this returns a promise with a message collection, so we can get the size in a similar way. So let's go back. I can now say const messages equals await channel dot messages dot fetch. We can then pass in an object where the limit will equal amount. And now I want to go ahead and comment this out, and I want to destructure size from messages. So I can say const size equals messages. And now I'm wanting to look through all of the messages and then delete them. So I can say messages dot for each will have a message here. And then I simply just want to say message dot delete. So now if I save this, the bot should restart. Let's go ahead and send some messages here. So hello, test, hello world. Hi, hey. So just random messages. And our bot is up and running. So now I could do exclamation point CC. We'll specify one. So it should delete the CC command as well as hey. So if I run this, it'll then delete both of those, and it'll say that it deleted one message. So now if I do CC5, it'll go through and delete five messages, as we see right there. And if I do exclamation point CC with no arguments, this should delete all messages and then tell us how many it deleted, and we can see now, and we can now see that this works as both a legacy and a slash command. So going back into VS Code, these are the two options you have. You have the bulk delete method, as well as the fetch method, and then looping through and deleting messages manually. Now these both have their own pros and cons. For example, bulk delete is very simple. It's just a one line piece of code, but this can only delete messages that were sent within the last two weeks. And messages.fetch probably is going to take a little longer, but also you can loop through and only delete messages from certain users or only delete messages that contain certain words if you want, because you have access to each individual message. But these are the two options you have whenever you want to bulk delete a bunch of messages. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.